TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, little warning screen just in case, but I doubt that we will need it. But, you know, it's there. And like I said, we are on Twitch, so go to twitch.com and put in the username. The username's at the bottom of the screen, and that's how you lock us in. Don't forget, too, Patreon, five days per week. I just renewed my Patreon membership, so we got another year. <laughs> Talk to me. This is uh, Inside Somali Gang War, Tommy G. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Now, this is what I want to say about the Somali uh Somali stuff. I feel like in America, and not let me not say let me not say all of America. Let me say let me just specifically talk Chicago. In Chicago, the Somalians are they're 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 cool regardless of where they are. Let's 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 be cool. Let's be straight on that. But in Chicago, they are not what they are in Canada, in the UK. In Minnesota, and and they are not like that. From my experience, I ain't never met a gang banging Somalian in, in 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 Chicago. That's just me personally. I've never came across it. I'm not saying that there aren't, but I'm saying they're not as prevalent as in the UK, uh, 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 Minnesota, uh, uh, Wisconsin, uh. And what else did I say? Uh, Canada. Like, it's not the same. So, this has a lot of relevance because the heavy Somalian population in, in uh, the UK. And shout out to all my Somalians anyway. Shout out to all my Somali people anyway. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of Somali friends. That's what I'm saying. I ain't never, I ain't never came across a Somali that was not in Chicago. I, I don't know. Like, their parents was not going for that <laughs> at all. They was too involved in their lives to let that to, to happen. Anyway, talk to me, though. We stay dangerous. We stay safe. I got kids to make it home, too. You feel me? No, I feel you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many times did you use that? 15, 20 times, maybe. Red Sea, man. See the riverside. The Cedar Where Riverside is community is remembering a store clerk shot to death during a possible robbery attempt. What the hell is that? Clothing, man. Today we head to Minneapolis and we find I, I knew it. I knew this was in Minnesota. I knew it. Heavy, heavy Somalians is heavy gang thugging in Minnesota. 100%. I didn't even know this is in Minnesota, but I had to, it gotta be. Selves in the middle of a Somali gang war. This is one of the first places we've covered that the guys that invited. I want to say Somalians run the streets in Minnesota, 100%. Like, I don't know for sure, cause I'm not from there, but like, it seems like it. I thought it necessary to provide us with security. Minneapolis is world renowned for its strong pocket of Somali culture. And here you'll find the gamut of Somalis from honorable clergymen oh, okay. to fraudsters, from US senators to dudes catching bodies in the street. And for some people, their only reference to Somali culture might be in the Tom Hanks movie, Captain Phillip. Great movie. Well, there's more to know. Like many recent immigrants, Somalis have a reputation for being quite entrepreneurial. They are also known for being family oriented and as a community, they are dedicated to their faith. This defines a large portion of Minneapolis. 100% my one of my daughter my daughter's godmom is Eritrean. Uh I'm not sure well, how close it is to being Somalian. I know it's in the same region maybe. I don't know. Come somebody correct me, but like they they're very tight knit, family orientated, good with their friends. They don't they, they lock in. They make sure you cool, all type of stuff. 
God bless Somalis. But for the Somalis running the street, they have cultivated an entirely different reputation. These are guys that have proven that they are willing to be extremely dangerous. We are gonna take you to the Valley of the Beast where an active turf war is going on. We're gonna talk to both sides of the equation and we're also gonna talk to elders to see if they can lend clarity and peace to the future of this situation. Folks, it's time to get boots on the ground. But first, a quick announcement. Salute. For a long time, people have been requesting for us to go check out the Somalis in Minneapolis. Anytime you look these guys up, there's these gigantic gang wars and beefs in the hot. And I'm not even gonna lie to you. I ain't never been to Minnesota because I ain't got no business in Minnesota. Ain't no point for me to be in Minnesota. And the lows and this guy versus that guy. To be honest, I don't know much about the Somali culture other than that there's been some real internal conflict and civil war within the yeah. country where it's just not safe. Not many economic opportunities. Uh, as well as the Tom Hanks movie, I'm the Captain Now. Great food, too. Don't forget to mention that. Great food. Look at me. Sure. I'm the Captain Now. We're meeting a bounty hunter slash security guard. You guys know we don't go... Bounty hunter, that's a blood? It's bounty hunter's bloods, right? Oh, are we talking gang yet or no? Or is he a real, like, bounty hunter? Go anywhere with security. We don't have an aggressive approach i just don't feel the need for having security but um they thought it was necessary oh, brother. what's Good. your name token token pleasure nice to, to meet you, you. pleasure oh, to meet you man what's it like being a bounty hunter in minnesota it can get wild man a lot of oh he's okay he's a real bounty hunter all right gotcha. people tend to want to i thought like a bounty hunter blood or something miss court on us and when you miss court it's a big bag we're about to lose so we gotta get on that ass i never like I, I don't like putting people in jail i became a bondsman to get my homies out of the jam you feel me yeah a lot of times i gotta write bonds for people i don't know and those guys don't go to court and that's when i gotta become the bounty hunter got a vest up go kick some doors in this is the first time we've actually gone anywhere with security oh okay is it that necessary around here for G Money, yeah. G Money is a controversial Minneapolis drill rapper that sounds like this. I'm too precise, I tap the button. Come on, watch me dress the crowd. Them niggas always gonna be mad. They know that little bro walked them down. Got a glizzy poke right through my sweater. My little brother hot as hell. He doing drills while on the tether. Frontline in the trenches, you can't tell us about this war. Niggas and while many in this he's decent as hell <laughs> city rock with him the word around town is he has a lot of enemies which makes him a dangerous man to be around and hence the security what this summer looks like so far it's been relatively quiet compared to the last couple summers because when george floyd happened shit flared up like a mother if i was to all right b to compare for the last couple years it's been relatively quiet but it's still active as hell the small games are taking over they're coming deep and there's a lot of rivalries. North Minneapolis has a big rivalry with the highs and the lows. And there's a street that literally divides the highs and lows. It's called Broadway. So on Broadway, you want to tread lightly because that's where the ops be at. Y'all got a Broadway there too, huh? We got one in the rack. Broadway Street where the good food is. A lot of food, a lot of, a lot of, all right. I gotta say, what up, Minneapolis? All right, Murder Ave, we all time. Um, why you call it murder apples? It looks friendly around here. It's, it's friendly, friendly for, for we, some people. And it gets dirty, it's dirty for some people. Man. There's this, there's size, you know what I mean? You might see shit popping off, you might not see shit popping off. I ain't gonna lie. How have things been lately? Ever since this year started, other than that, the, the cop getting killed and all that shit. Fuck that. Yeah, it's been good. It's was been it good. a Somali cop? No, it was a black cop. Who shot you? Are there victims inside? <laughs> When Officer Jamal Mitchell rolled up to the scene of Blaisdell Avenue and found two people injured Man. in the street. When Officer Jamal Mitchell asked Muhammad whether or not he was okay, that is when Muhammad pulled out a handgun and started shooting at Officer Mitchell. I had a warrant on that dude yeah. who shot the black cop. I was, black I was actively looking for the guy, Mustafa Muhammad. What was the community's reaction to the, the cop guy? Oh, crazy. That's been the third cop yeah, shooting yeah. in Minneapolis, Minnesota area in like the last three months. Yeah. Because George Dang, Ford has is it hard to support police? Like, are people scared to be vocally Hella, on a supporter? Hella, 100%. 100%. Even when the cop is in the road. 100%. 100%. You feel like the pendulum needs to swing back a little bit? Uh, uh, I don't f 12. How you, you know what I mean? Before. That's a rough style. Hey. hey. George Floyd, you know yeah. what I mean? And after George Floyd, it just made it worse for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They need to turn this into a stand your ground state. Moms getting carjacked. Carjackings are up. Stand your ground state in Minneapolis, Minnesota? Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. It's too lawless right now. Hell no. Nah. Yeah, what? Stand your ground state in. That's like putting stand your ground state in, the, in Chicago. No, it doesn't make sense. No way. 
through the roof See, right now. The congresswoman got jacked in her own driveway. Yes. She was a defund the police yes. person, right? Yes, she was. Let's roll the tape on what happened yes, in this she was. Perhaps no story encapsulates the chaos Minneapolis is experiencing than the story of Shavanti Shanana, a local Democratic Party leader. She was with her kids when a group of teens attacked her in her own driveway and threatened her with guns. She took to social media after to express her outrage and said the following, we need to get illegal guns off our streets and catch these young people who are running wild creating chaos across our city. Public service announcement. If you think it's gangsta beating up a woman in front of her own children, you are an absolute bitch and nobody respects you. 100%. That's not gangsta at all. I second that for Tommy G. I stand behind that. The twist to this story is this same lady, Shivanthi, was earlier calling for the Minneapolis police to be abolished. I wonder if her views have changed since this attack. Imagine if she had a gun on her. She would have went to jail too. Am I allowed to ask what that is? Oh, it's just a taser. X26, right? Police edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the legality on that? Perfectly legal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, these are just his security guys. So in the in the in the in the um, promo video or the the pre roll whatever it's called, the previews. I thought these was the gangsters. So I was like, wait a minute, what the hell did I get a taser from? And what is that gonna do? But it makes more sense that their security. You gotta yeah. pop that top take off. That, take that top off. And if yeah. someone's resisting, you drive them. Yeah. Yeah. How many times did you use that? Yeah. Off the record, allegedly. 15, 20 times, maybe. It well, don't even gotta be off the record. He could use it. He's a security guy. It sounds like we're protected. On that note, let's go to the next spot. I feel like a goddamn Somalian president right now. We're rolling in a nice convoy. We got a car up front, car in back with protection. Drive stay safe, man. That's legal in Minneapolis? Oh, oh man, yeah. when you got your permit to carry. Yeah, he got. He probably got a blue card. <laughs> he probably got everything that's needed. When you security, you can do that. Yeah. All right. America. Golly. We ain't playing around. <laughs> we stay dangerous, we stay safe. I got kids to make it home too, you feel me? Outside, it was raining cats and dogs, so we decided it'd be a good idea to head up to the studio and meet with the crew as the G-Money entourage was assembling. The guy that we're supposed they to be meeting, one of them is a guy named G-Money, right? right? Here tomorrow? Has yeah. he ever been on time to anything that no. you've done with him? Uh, I can't say. I can tell you, bro. Yeah. No, I think it's never on time. Did that irritate yeah, you at all? I mean, shit. I got family in Minnesota. Yeah, but he'd be paying for it. So. Is Somali time known for being really late? Uh, honestly, not. Nah. I wouldn't say not. Nah. Uh, either early or on time. As three non-Somalis, what are some Somali stereotypes I should know about? Can't drive? I don't know. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> no, that ain't no stereotype. <laughs> that them niggas can't drive for shit, bro. The word on the street is the average Somali is not the best driver. <laughs> best driver? Nah, we do be driving. Y'all have got us up. I'm out, baby, y'all have got us We could drive. Don't get us Y'all be wrecking we, shit. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I do wreck. You been out be wrecked boom. a lot of guys, but, but be I've never got, I've never gotten, until recently, I've never gotten to a car accident. How many cars have you wrecked? He up there. I'm. Yeah, I'm he up, up there. there. I don't want the Cali wreck the I car, got, got another car wrecked it again. Four. Four. You can't drive. You can't drive. The stereotypes are right. You got four cars? Four cars in front of me. And you think you're a good driver. I don't know how much. You the only you're the reason <laughs> insurance is no, high in the area. No, the dude. only reason why I'd be wrecking cars is because I'd be high as hell off drugs and I'd just be driving. I was going to say, he sounded like he'd be off the Zans wrecking cars. And nodding off and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> this has G Money. And that's your name too. Okay, so it's like a, that's like a gangster name tag right there. <laughs> Would you consider yourself Muslim? Yeah. How does it work being Muslim and also kind of doing everything he's doing is haram. The haram is bad, right? I don't know. Street shit and kind of doing <laughs> smoking drugs and stuff. It teaches that nobody perfect and you can make mistakes. You feel me? And we we just a regular person. Nobody perfect. Yeah, nobody perfect. Even Christians, certain things they're not supposed to do and they still do it. So everybody will assume that just because you Muslim, you got a straight beat behind the books. But it all depends. To do it. Yeah. I don't encourage but nobody to do just, anything I do. You hear me? It's just the lifestyle we G money high. Live and certain things. Man, helps niggas us. lying. They late to their own interview, man. <laughs> <laughs> there was so much smoke accumulating in the studio that I felt like Wiz Khalifa. So we decided to get out of there, get some fresh air, and post up near the train tracks with G Money so we could get to know him a little better. Yeah, high security on high alert. This is. Do I seem high as shit? I 
Oh. I'm not high as shit, but Dwight. So. Okay. We have a lot of factors working against us right now. We have, mm -hmm. it's rain, there's beef. We have a little bit of that Minneapolis medical in the air. Hey, you gotta be careful in the rain too. I'm telling you, when you, when you got ops, don't be outside playing in the rain because they slide in the rain because why? Forensically, nothing will be left behind. So you got to be careful out here, Tommy. <laughs> what are your parents doing they got here? What do they do to make ends meet? My pops was a, he was a chef. He was working. He was working right here, down the block. Yeah, my mom was taking care of us and my pops was working for him. Is he still around? No, nah, my pops died. Sorry to hear that, man. How old were you when that happened? I was about 15. My dad played a big part of my life, so. Yeah. Was it about at the same time you hopped off the porch? No, I hopped off the porch, but when I was 13. Okay. That's when I caught my first juvenile case, man. I was like, I had to do two years of juvenile. What'd you get caught for? It's 16 robberies in two hours. What? God damn it, G Money. 16 in two hours? What was it? You was really living GTA. So dumb what? Ass shit. What did you rob? Yeah, we were just robbing. Hey, everything moving, man. man. What did your parents think about you hopping on the street? Man, they didn't like that shit. Nope. Cause they escaped civil war, right? Yeah. And you came here and chose a life of war. Why? I, mean, I ain't chose a life of war. Life of war kind of chose me. Oh yeah, man. He had a black Air Force One zone too. Make sure to highlight his shoes. What are your hopes for the future? Man, I hope to. I want to make the city a better place one day. You do? How do you want to do that? I help the community now. I just don't show it. Do you feel like the community thinks you help the community? Yeah. Certain people. Do you think kids look up to you? Hell yeah, that's a lot of kids look up to you. What is that like? I try to spread a positive message sometimes, but... They get such a negative message off my music sometimes and they take it the wrong way and, and think they can. Is there an example of something someone took the wrong way? Like, I got little kids be sending me car, like little Kia boys, Minneapolis Kia boys be sending me. Hey, 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 come here. You look like a ninja, like you're ready to go on top of a building or something. <laughs> you said what? This one made my name G-Money right here. Oh uh, yeah, this is my baby, man. Come on, dad. One of the biggest, man. G-Buddy, we had to switch it up, man. Yeah. You hear me? One on one. There's only one G-Money out here. Don't cap. Y'all can't do no replicating what we doing. No bop. One of none. Run up, get done. We're going to K Block, the other Somali side, and we'll see you there. Oh, he going to the other, the, like the, the, the op. Or they each other ops, he's talking to both sides. What's up, fellas? Looks good. How you doing? Good to see you. Doing good. Is this what they call K Block? I don't know. Sounds like that. <laughs> K looks K block looks like an outstanding <laughs> an outstanding very prevalent upscale block. Look at these cribs. These are nice. Whoa, but this man. is Carvel, man. It's a big like fact in Somali community in Minneapolis, especially. There's a lot of stores, there's barbershops. What type Oh no, never mind. You got one of these right there? Like this is like an indoor swap meet. Anytime it's one of these, you're in the hood. You sit in the mall, man. Damn near. When you're in Midwest towns, at least, neighborhoods. How's it going? What do you think when you see all the young guys wearing the shysons? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah. All right. For someone that's never visited, what can you tell that's, that's how I also feel, too. When I see people in shysons, I don't think nothing of it. Because for me, personally, I'm always on, on, on defense anyway. Like, I'm never really lacking <laughs> so i really don't think nothing of it but i'm uh, i'm still paying attention to it but i don't think nothing of it I'm about it. It's a great place to be you can make a lot of money yeah what would you do with my hair how would you cut me up if, if you had my hair the nice fade would you ever do a mullet oh yeah any advice for the youth keep god first family second and that's it get your money any somali words we can teach people back home minimal 
Unity. What do you like to eat around here? We Somalis, bro. We all drink tea. You feel me? Eat some busa. Drink you, you drink green tea? Nah, not green tea. It's Somali tea. What the hell is that? Closing, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh. got the drink in it. Alrighty. <laughs> For anyone that's doubting the power of rap music to influence, it looks like New York in here. You guys ever see a New York drill music before? This looks like a New York drill music video right now. You think so? What do you do day to day? Make money. They do look like New York, but they sound like Chicago. I've been making music and shit like that, so you know how that be. Ooh, samosas? Or what is that? What are your parents do? My mom was an immigrant. She came to America. My, my pops is still in Somalia. So what is it going to take for him to get here? No, I, is he waiting on immigration papers? Uh, I think he is at the moment right now. Do you know what it was like when she got the news that, hey, we're going to America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was very exciting for her, you know? Yeah. Very exciting. Is it? Is America what she thought it would be? You come from a third world country. The big relief to come to a country like America. Which is more dangerous, Somalia or America? Somalia. That's not even a question. Somalia. What's your name, man? My name is Chaisi. Chaisi. Yeah. Chaisi. How do you come up with that name? Y'all earned it. Okay. How do you avoid being in the beef? What's the best way to do that? Just stay out of my way. You gonna be straight. You know what I mean? What do you guys think about mainstream media? Man, they like, some liars. They're dead. Like, and they're goofy as hell. Free Palestine, for real. Yeah, yeah. See what I mean? They sound, they talk like Chicago people because they're in the Midwest, obviously. But heavy Somali, I mean, heavy Chicago influence on the lingo. But New York got the look for sure. Palestine, man. They do look like New York. This is Mo Jamma. He's a community leader who is taking a brave and hands-on approach to working with the youngsters in the street, and he speaks with them to encourage a more positive direction for their future. I'm about peace, I'm about unity. Uh, in the end of the day, the city got a pass, right? It's got a dark pass. And I got homies that are about six feet deep. I got homies that are doing life. I got homies that'll never get to see their families, their kids, their wives. My goal is, is for everybody to understand that where what you just showed them, which I just seen, has more benefit to the community than downfall. I see a lot of youngers. Why aren't they chasing that? These young guys are chasing that. That some of them got, you know, some of them got it, different ideas. Go ahead. It'd be, it be hard to chase that when you feel me, when you in a bad predicament. You know what I'm saying? Does living this lifestyle though make the predicament worse? It could make the predicament worse. It, it, it will but, make the predicament worse. But hey, you never know. You might hit that move that changed your life. You really never know. But at the same time, it's like, it ain't never about all that for real. It's like, what you, you worry about getting a job and then you gotta wait two weeks for a paycheck when your mom rent do some of the shit that they're trying. That's, that's, that's really what it be about. Especially if you first generation or you a child coming here, you're not even first generation, but you looking at your parents struggle and you seeing these street dudes because you're in these neighborhoods, you seeing these street dudes getting money every day. Like that is the big, like, people, people like to deny it, but hustlers, Gangsters, street dudes are heavily influential. M rappers mimic them, then m rappers get mimicked by the youth. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Trying to write that happened before him. I was I was in there. I seen it. That that that's not what we're promoting. Though. That's definitely not what we're promoting. If we can't be a unity, if if you can't see how much benefit that what they just showed you brings into this community, then you're looking for the wrong thing. That's definitely what you you're. You feel like people is. don't value the Somali impact on the community. It's not that they don't value like, the the, the, the Somali them. impact. They don't, they, don't well, well, they don't value what the youth brings. That's that's the issue. Um, I I, would, I just had a meeting at at a park uh, unity that was going on. What that was about was an uh, event that happened Fourth of July last year, right? So that whole shenanigans. Instead of instead of seeing it as a youth issue, they try to paint it as a Somali youth issue where individuals that have that one percent income decided to turn on the community and wanted to say oh the somali community is doing this this and the third they, they can't control their kids that's not the picture that's not what it is they definitely could be beneficial they could they could add more value to it this young man's in here that want to add more values that, that want to right the wrongs that want to because the youth good. can really change things 
they can change it for the better or for the worse. These guys are the future. They are, they definitely are. I staying ain't never gonna make things more. I if it looks like my eyes were darting around during this interview. What? No. It don't, it don't look like that to me. It look like you on point. I see it, but it look like you on point. You ain't even got to explain to me, buddy. I understand. They were. I had guys behind me with duffel bags with semi-automatic rifles, 20 kids with shiesties moving in and out. It was kind of a chaotic scene. I ain't really too much worried about changing like the world. I'm trying to make some money. That's life, bro. And you can't control what the next man doing. You know true, what I mean? True. You can't do that whatsoever. And then at the same time, you got to think about this shit like, what you going to worry about changing the world? Life ain't sweet. You don't see what's happening in Palestine right now? Life's in Gaza? In Gaza, don't nobody talk about none of that shit, though. There's real children getting killed every day. That's big facts. And I agree you with me? exactly what he's I saying. Can't, if you want to change things, call you start from where you're at. The ground that you're nah, standing I'm gonna on. Change, I'm going to change everything for myself in life. And then you can change everything for everyone around you. Every individual. If I get on, everybody each here going to be on. That's for big life. Facts, big facts. Big facts. You're not lying. Man. They fend for each other. They feed each other. What's your plan to change your life and send it in a great direction? Man, some money. Open up some businesses. You know, feed my people. But you know, that's exactly how it be, though. A lot of people don't understand that coming from different walks of life, man. When you from a certain area and you get rich, it's not like you have to, but morally, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put your people on. You gotta put like that's like me getting rich. And the people that supported me, my friends and family, just leaving them there. When I got lucky and worked for, the, and I, when I got lucky and, and came up on X amount of dollars, and shoot, we all lucky at it, if I'm lucky. It's as simple as that. When you, when we all blessed, not luck. Luck got nothing to do with anything, a little bit. But blessed, I'll be praying for this. So it's, it, it, it different. You grow up in the predicament I grew up in, you don't really have too much of a of a plan, you feel me? In this community, we about getting money, pushing positivity. We are Muslim, as you can see, see what I'm saying? We are brothers over here. So, you know, it ain't nothing about no negativity, gang beef. It ain't, it ain't nothing about, you know, do drugs, pop pills, none of that. You see what I'm saying? We're going to bounce out of this area, but can we walk with you and ask you some questions? Yeah, of yeah, course, my bro stay with me, though. Oh, everybody? No, no, just them. them That's right fine. Here. If I'm in a club and you me mug me, I'm going to up and blast it, chop a bullet's blast, and now he passes. Where are the mentors or where are the people that are like, hey, like your life's going to be crazy if you keep down this path? Well, you got individuals like myself. We got a couple of homies, but you got to understand this is real life. Majority of the ones that would look after these young kids are no longer alive. Majority of the, the ones that would speak to these young men are six feet deep. Mm -hmm. They're either locked up, doing life, or they can't speak for themselves. They're dead. Um, so we need some sort of men that are missing. That's such a huge piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. That the mentorship is, is where it's, it's missing. That's always it. When the men are missing, that's what's missing. you can always tell. That's the biggest thing that's missing. So. Initially, when I look at this situation, it blows my mind that someone can leave a war-torn country, come to America with the promise of a better tomorrow, and their kids choose the gangster street life. I just don't get it. But then I acknowledge the power that an environment plays on the development of a kid. I told if you, it's the environment. I already said that. If you are put into a hood, you can expect hood outcomes. And we also have to talk about the role of fatherhood here. A lot of these kids' fathers are dead or in prison, and a kid without a father statistically has poor outcomes. A number I came across said that a kid that is close to their father is 80% less likely to be in prison. That is significant, and it makes me think the- Fathers keep sons out of jail and daughters off poles. You get me. Power a dad has to change the world for the better, one kid at a time. That's why if any of y'all watching this and y'all not in y'all kids' life, go ahead and get back in it, man. I think it's tough for you, it's gonna be tougher for them. So today I feel like we didn't get to really meet G Money. And a lot of this happens, I feel like with gangster guys, it's hard to meet them unless they're one-on-one -on -one or in a small group, especially the more the guys, it feels like the less they're gonna be willing to share about themselves. g is actually gonna meet us in a parking garage. We had the same feeling. He hit me up, I wanted to hit him up. I'm happy that he's coming. I wanna to talk to him more. We'll wait until G-Money pulls up. We'll we'll see you when he comes. Hey bro, get that camera up out of here, bro. Yeah, hold on, 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 hold Oh, well, what's on your mind, man? 
I don't really I want y'all to get to know me for real, man. I know you. What was your childhood right? like, dude? My childhood was. I mean, it's not your normal childhood, like you know, your parents grew up rich or none of that shit. You know, we grew up in the hood. You feel me? I grew up. People think I'm from Riverside or some. You know, so a lot of people think I'm from Riverside, and like I'm not from Riverside. But it was mostly my mom that took care of us, and uh, my daddy was really like he was in. Yeah, of a perk. Uh, in and out of my life, but he was in my life for real. Did your mom and him not have the best relationship? Yeah, they ain't had the best relationship, you know, but he still had a good relationship with me. Maybe some lean. My mom really helped me up. She really kept me together and shit, but even my mom, she struggled her damn self. Like, she, she handicapped her damn self. So, you know, I'm the man of the family. I take care of shit, you feel me? Like, it sounds like a lot of pressure. Man, it, it is a lot sometimes, man, you know, but it ain't never a lot. I guess my natural instinct is always to make peace. Like, I like being neutral where I go. I like people liking each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like when I hear, okay, like there's a big beef going here, or highs and lows there, or, you know, this crew doesn't like that crew, or K Block versus Seed, or whatever. Like, my natural instinct is like, how do you bring these people together? And is it possible? You can't, once blood is shit, and I feel like it has been, you really can't. It's over. Forever. Possible. And does it go back generations or is it possible to be healed? I mean, what do you think about that? Man, I feel like it's it's possible. Like it goes back generations, but like that generation that went back to it and what they're fighting over now and what they're beefing over now ain't got nothing to do with the, what happened in the generation before, you feel me? They just young though, you feel me? They don't know what they doing, they just young, they jumping off the porch, they seeing what other people doing, they seeing what's cool on the internet and shit. And they I, I, How many generations can it go back? If you are if you're not even first generation here in the country, like your parents came there from Somalia, were you born in Somalia too? Like that means your kids will be first generation. So where does it, what, what do you mean? Huh? I need more of an explanation. When I think it go back years, y'all the first time, y'all the only ones beefing with each other. Maybe, maybe one generation of beef. They don't even know what they- I don't know, I can't be speaking on it. I'm just looking at the timelines. It, it don't add up. And this shit for, they ready to crash out over shit they don't know nothing about. Like, they just got in this shit. I don't know a damn thing about this shit. Like, uh, What do you think the attraction is to a kid to join the gang or to be in the streets and hop off the porch, so to speak? I can't speak on a new generation, though, because the new generation is so f up because like the kids jumping off the porch mamas and daddies and shit they don't really got them like that. and then this is how gangs just started a bunch of kids in the neighborhood mamas probably at work my other parents strung out some kids ain't got no parents some kids just lost and they all come together they just start doing things together once they do start doing shit together they start growing up together they want to expand they want to go do other shit to make more money. They want to go do this. Now they trying to make money where they can't. And now they got to go pick up a gun. And then now they got a beef. And now they turn into a gang. Some people really do, though. Some people really just join, join gangs for no reason, I feel like. And, like, there's people. That's true. People joining gangs at this age in 2024. Like, why are you doing that, bro? Like, well, I guess I appreciate us touching base. And I always think it's good to talk one-on-one. -on -one and um, nah, yeah, I think sure. we covered a lot more ground. And then we got to learn more about you. Appreciate you, man. Nah, for sure, man. I appreciate Tommy G swimming by coming on the show, the man. Mo took me through the Carmel Mall to speak with business owners where I saw the hustle and bustle of entrepreneurs working hard. He then took me to speak with a religious leader and elder who I wanted to talk to to get his perspective both on Somali history and his thoughts on the gang and violence amongst the youth. This is what he had to say. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Tommy. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. 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 So you're visiting us from Minnesota or from somewhere from else? From Milwaukee. Milwaukee, yes, yes. Oh, oh, you from Milwaukee? Milwaukee get active too now. Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Man, they, they top tier now too all of a sudden. That's recent though, like in the last 15, 10 years. Yes. What's your name? Tommy. Hi, Muhammad. Nice to meet you. Milwaukee, Wisconsin been getting worse and worse. Nice to meet you too. So, tell me, 
What happened in Somali that caused people to come to America in large numbers? Yeah. Well, in Somalia, when I grew up, was nothing different than what you have in America. The country was prosperous. We have the golden days. I was lucky. We we're gonna be raised. And Somalia is one of those people's go getter. They don't wait someone else. Even when the Europeans came to colonize, they didn't accept that nonsense. Mm -hmm. They fought. What really happened in the country that made the unrest happen? That made a lot of people immigrate and want to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened was the military became so corrupted, and things were really. I feel like this where it always starts when you see all of this happening. Not only the military, everybody in the government thing, and the people uprised finally. And the worst part was that the military regime started, you know, fighting with its own people rather than, you know, resolving the political problems. It started like certain, like the, the central regions, and then eventually the worst was what happened to Somaliland, part called now. Uh, the, the dictator and the, the military regime, how are we going to change? There wasn't such a plan. So what happened is finally, like... Tommy, you tried to sit like him. I, I understand. Fighting among themselves and things were getting the civil war went war and none one side didn't win. So that's the thing. So unfortunately that caused problem after problem. Let's give you some history and context on what happened in Somalia, a coastal country that at many times in its history was quite prosperous. The Somali Civil War officially started in 1991 when the central government of Somalia collapsed following the overthrow of President Syed Barr. The roots of this conflict trace back to the 1980s marked by severe economic decline, political repression, and inter-clan rivalries. 33 years, almost. That's tough. Our's government relied heavily on clan-based favoritism, which meant if you weren't in the clan, you didn't get the job, and the marginalized clans were sick of being oppressed. This led to clan militias vying for control. The power struggle between factions resulted in widespread violence and instability, leading to displacement, human rights violations, and a famine in 1992 that left over 300,000 people dead. The ongoing conflict led many Somalis to flee their homes, seeking refuge in other countries. One of the major hubs for refugee settlement was Minneapolis, Minnesota. How hard was it for someone to apply? Okay, so I understand now the presence in Minnesota, okay. Apply and get accepted and go to America. Well, luckily in my case, uh, this, the, the country was still a government. My thing was to get the passport, it's very hard to get the passport. So when I get my passport, I went back to the country, get my passport and left. So unfortunately, I left the country and I stayed in Kuwait for four years, working there for four years. Do you believe America is the land of opportunity still? Yeah, so America still is the land of opportunity, but it's not as it used to be the people before us. So one question is, what advice would you have for the youth? There's some youth out there, they're kind of choosing the life of the streets. There's a lot of good role models around here that are entrepreneurs, that are senators, that are business owners, yeah. but a lot of these kids are choosing the route of a gangster rapper yeah. and criminal. Yeah. What do you think about that? What well, would be the your thing advice? is, as I said, every side will have some bad operators. Unfortunately, I don't like how that was worded. They're choosing the route of a gangster turned rapper or robber. Okay. Oh, uh, I think maybe the problem is when the family break, because the, when people like, get married, they rather stick with together. Like yeah. a mother household. Think, yes. If if you could speak to some of these young men out there that are choosing which path they want to go, some yeah. of them are choosing the streets. What what advice would you give to them if you could speak directly to well, them? Well, that's just something we most of us we fail, including myself. We have to go and address the issue. One thing good about our prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, if there is a difficult situation. He used to face it right away and resolve it. So it's all about Apple. In our kids, we have to be care about them. So if, if I'm walking with my own kids and they fail on the ground, I'm not going to say, oh, they fail. No. Same thing with these people. They fail with their life and do bad things. We have to address them. We have to, we have to approach them and try to help them. So action is, action is the key. Taking Absolutely. action and then Absolutely. moving it forward Absolutely. and making sure. But remember, but it's all oh, looking happening to these kids. Yeah. No, support these system. kids are like your own kids. Yeah. Mo introduces us to his mentor, who has a reputation for giving back to the community. One of the things he does is every Friday for the last seven years, he's visited the Riverside Plaza apartments to feed the kids and talk to them. Here's what he had to say. Hey, what's, what's your role in the community or what do you do? My role in the community is actually first, I'm a husband and father of five. Congratulations. Yeah, so that is. So that's my first responsibility, but also professionally I work for the city of Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we take care of the, all the parks, lakes. A lot of people, they escape, escape civil war, yeah. and they started building their own community, their own businesses, and starting to prosper. Yeah. And yet the kids chose, instead of peace, which they easily could have chosen, yeah. it, it, maybe not, but it, it seemed yeah. like, why did the kids choose war again? Well, I really don't like us to paint uh, a picture where we think every kid, Some, all a kids, small percentage yeah, of the young yeah. men. A so, small and, and, and it comes men. with the environment. Um, it comes with, you know, this is a country where our kids are struggling in schools. Our kids are dealing with a lot of mental health and so we can use, but we don't address that. We don't talk about that. So, okay, so I'm trying to paint the picture. So we have kids struggling in school. We got COVID-19 uh, online learning, and then we eliminated funding for after-school programs, which to me is a- uh, Stupid. It's, it's kind of insane. Yeah. And so it was a perfect storm that's resulted in kids that are younger and younger getting involved in game violence. Yes, absolutely. If you come back to my community specifically, we came from a culture where the whole village takes care of kids. A place where you don't have to. Because it takes a village. The school, after school programs, if the school's responsibility to teach kids academically, so you don't have to worry about homework help or are your kids performing? Are they doing well in the school? Well, something you brought up that I do think is, is a, a trend throughout America that is worth being brought up is this. We used to survive on eras where there could be the mom would go work, they could support five kids, the mom could stay at home, yeah. and there was a lot of hands-on parenting. Yeah. Now there's a lot of divorce and there's a lot of two parents working. And so the kids are left on. Yeah, it's inflation. Everything is super expensive now. Both parents have to go to work unless you like rich or make it or go to college and be like a doctor or high performing lawyer supervise a lot, a, lot. Of, a lot of time in their hands yes when and when you add that to social media and 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 the devices that they have a lot of times things happen online without even knowing i started with being a father of five right all of my five children were born here my kids are american kids i spent the majority of my life here in Minnesota. We as adults, parents, don't see our kids Somali enough. We see them Americans because they don't know their native language. They rather eat, um, you know, a McDonald's than eat Somali food, right? It's like pulled between two worlds. Yes, almost. and then I think that's a great point because belonging is one of the most important things a kid can feel. Yes. And if a kid is feeling not not American enough, or not Somali enough, or not Black enough, or not Muslim enough, yeah, then they're lost. And when you're lost, you do things yeah. that. You, to try and find yourself, if you could talk directly to these kids, what advice would you give them? This is what I tell my kids, you know, always ask for help before it's too late. And then you have to know that there's people that care about you, people who are very passionate about mentoring you, giving you an opportunity. And even when you're struggling, people who just want to listen. There's a lot of people that care about you. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, you are our future. We love you and we care about you. That's a great ending message. Yes, I thank you for what you do. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for what you do. Yes, sir. I had a great time checking this out. I appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you next week. Peace. I feel like I learned a little bit more about the Somali culture. I'm gone.